Good morning, traders. Good morning, Marvino. Um, welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. The risk disclaimer, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, the goal of the webinar here is to go through uh, and introduce you to Bookmap. Uh, who uses it, uh, define what Bookmap is, uh, how to connect to the various markets, how to subscribe to it, and then uh, some of the resources that are online for further education, uh, and then get into some of the uh, live order flow and understand just the basics of the book map chart, define the elements on the chart, uh, and then look at the order flow. Okay, now this is the uh, basic education uh, that is free with Bookmap, and I'll go through some of the other resources in just a moment. Uh, but with um, the subscription of Bookmap, you also get a much more advanced education. Okay, there's an educational course, four-part educational course that is available online. Uh, in fact, you should have access to the first part of that for free, uh, and then you get the um, uh, access to the advanced order flow webinars. Now, those start at 11 a.m. Eastern, okay, following this webinar. And we go through the, the uh, order flow in detail, right? So uh, you'll definitely understand what you're looking at in Bookmap and how to use it. Uh, and um, then based on our analysis, okay, and it's a very objective process, uh, we start to anticipate where future price might go uh, in those advanced webinars. Okay, they're every day. Uh, and uh, so you can understand what it looks like, uh, what price or uh, order flow phenomena looks like uh, in the live markets, uh, and then you can start to apply that uh, uh, to your trading, okay? All right, let's jump into the website and go through some of the details here. Okay, we'll scroll down. So what is Bookmap? Uh, well, we're a software trading platform. Okay. That's our advantage, and that's what we offer. Uh, we're not a broker. We're not a data provider. We're, we're just software, okay. just like any other platform that's out there. Uh, who uses Bookmap? Well, uh, day traders, scalpers, swing traders, and quants. Uh, we came from this quant environment, and I'll show you the details uh, as we get into the, uh, the live order flow. Uh, but uh, this works on much higher time frames, okay. Uh, the same... Um, uh, rationale applies in order flow on much, much higher time frames, even a monthly chart. Okay, in fact, uh, we've been looking at uh, uh, since there's been some volatility, we've been looking at the much higher time frames uh, in the advanced webinars. Okay, and seeing some great stuff. Uh, anyway, we'll continue on connectivity. So, we need to go through how you connect Bookmap. Okay, three different markets that Bookmap connects to futures, US equities, and digital currencies. Now, the digital currency data here is free, okay? So uh, you can um, subscribe to Bookmap now and be up and running within minutes. Uh, now, for futures and U.S. equities, uh, you will need to provide the data, okay, through your broker or data provider, uh, however you connect to the markets, okay? We're not a broker. We're not a data provider. That's something that you'll need to bring here because it does cost money. Uh, for U.S. equities, uh, you connect with DXV. That's the only method at the moment. Okay. For futures, you have many different uh, options here. Rhythmic, CQG, Gain Capital, Transact, IQ Feed, Nanotic, and Cedro. Now, uh, you can also connect via the API of TTX Trader Pro, Ninja 7 and 8, and Interactive Brokers. Okay. It's recommended to not do that. Um, well, it's fine, I and mean, there's no problems. Uh, it's just that you will get cleaner data, and you'll just bypass uh, any sort of complex uh, API uh, issues that may arise uh, every now and then uh, they do when maybe they change their software. Uh, that's actually happened with transact data uh, recently. But um, uh, anyway, you um, uh, can just bypass that completely and just go with the data provider, all right, like Rhythmic or CQG. All right, let's go through the pricing. Okay, so you can subscribe monthly uh, to Bookmap, the prices are, are uh, listed down here. Uh, yearly, you get the 20% discount and you'll see the difference down here, uh, or you can get it now lifetime. Okay, so uh, there's three different versions here of Bookmap and I'll just uh, go over some of the uh, differences. Uh, the digital version here is free. Okay, this is a nice offering, uh, is for only one cryptocurrency at a time. Uh, however, like I said, the data is free. You can connect to multiple markets, but only one uh, uh, currency at a time. Uh, and um, 
the uh, markets are always open, so you can always check out uh, a live market with this free version. Uh, now, for futures and for U.S. equities, uh, you'll need to go with the global version. Okay, and I would recommend subscribing for a month. Uh, with the free digital version, you'll get access to a delayed U, uh, U.S. equities feed, uh, as well as uh, some downloads from futures markets. So you can check out like older files uh, and replay them. Uh, so um, still get an understanding of what some of the futures data looks like. But if you want the live market, uh, you're going to have to go with the global version. Okay, now that's uh, uh, the global version. The global plus version, uh, the big difference is the add-on indicators. Okay, being able to trade right from the chart into your funded account, as well as proprietary indicators we developed that look at order flow phenomena, like our large lot tracker, identifying larger players in the book, or our iceberg detector, again, uh, identifying larger players, but uh, they're hiding their liquidity. They don't want it to be seen. Okay, so therefore they're using a hidden order type. Uh, anyway, uh, there's unbalance indicators, correlation trackers, and some other uh, indicators as well. Uh, and that's what you get with the Global Plus version. Okay, if you want the details, you can click here uh, and uh, see a list of uh, all the different uh, uh, you know, variations. All right, sign up for webinars here. Uh, some testimonials. Let's just go through a few more resources uh, so uh, uh, you can um, uh, understand what you're uh, looking at here in Bookmap, or if you want further education. Uh, there's a blog that we have. Click on that link up here, and there's many articles. Uh, there's trader interviews. There's resources here. Uh, this is a good uh, point to uh, uh, look at uh, all sorts of different uh, material. Now, our Twitter feed as well. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, something I want to show you here in the Twitter today uh, and yesterday. Okay, uh, you might want to follow us uh, to get these kinds of updates here. It's at bookmap underscore pro. Okay, and uh, it's this one here uh, on the comparing bookmap to volume profile charts. Okay. I would recommend checking these out. Uh, they're um, uh, if you if you I mean these are popular trading strategies or uh, tools, uh, and then uh, understanding what you're looking at in your profile. Okay, but then applying it to bookmap. Okay, and what you're missing here, and it really truly is, you are missing something here. There's pieces of data here that are very important that you just don't see, okay, where you will see it in Bookmap, okay, and it's it's primarily uh, the liquidity, but it's also the, the traded volume, okay, yeah, to very specifically understand the uh, context of that volume uh, in, uh, in relationship to price structure, as well as the auction or the liquidity. Uh, and that's the advantage that you're getting here. Okay, So I would um, encourage you to check this out here. Uh, this is for the volume profile. Okay, So many of you trade volume profile. Uh, and uh, let's go through another one though, Okay, because uh, we uh, recently, um, uh, just the other day, uh, uploaded this one uh, as well, comparing footprint uh, charts to book map. Okay, so again, it's the same uh, idea here. Let's click here, okay? Because you are missing something. Uh, you're not getting uh, understanding in context. You're just seeing the traded volume here, and that's that's an issue. Uh, if you want more insight, you've got to understand liquidity, uh, and um, that's just that. Uh, so, for example, this this liquidity pulling here. Okay. Well, you see that the, they start to uh, ramp up the selling here, uh, but uh, understanding that uh, this was pulled, okay, uh, is is a big issue. Uh, or understanding some of these other issues where they're they're absorbing, uh, you know, getting filled at some of these areas here. You just won't see it on the footprint chart. It's not there. Okay, so uh, that's um, uh, more uh, enhanced insight, so you can make better trading decisions. Okay. Anyway, I encourage you to uh, check those out. I think it's uh, pretty pretty good content there. Uh, the um, YouTube channel. Let's just go through uh, last resource here, and then we'll look at the live market. Okay, uh, if you're new here, watch some of these intro videos, uh, and then uh, uh, then I would encourage you to watch these order flow um, educational videos here. Okay, these are very concise, short videos uh, that go through uh, order flow phenomena uncovered by Bookmap. Okay, uh, so this is the advantage you're getting here. Okay, so uh, I, I would encourage you to watch as many of these as you can and start to understand the concepts here. Okay, because uh, this is the what uh, 
bookmap visualizes. All right, uh, features and components are, are down here, uh, and then some selected webinars as well. Uh, if you want to catch up on uh, some of those, or look at some of the advanced order flow uh, education webinars as well. Okay, all right. Well, let's jump into the uh, S&P. We've been looking at the S&P. We finally get some uh, volatility here to be able to look at the S&P. All right. And uh, let's go through some of the details here. Uh, what are you looking at in Bookmap here? Uh, well, uh, you, you can see um, we have some add-on indicators here that come with just, just the global version, like this point of control indicator, as well as this VWAP here. And we also have a cumulative volume delta. You get that with the um, all with the global version. Uh, but uh, uh, in, in fact, I, I can't wait to go over this in the uh, advanced order flow webinar. Uh, 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 for for that tomorrow, I'm going to uh, hand out the link uh, for you guys. If you want to check out that advanced order flow webinar, we'll give you a sneak peek. We do that every Friday. Okay. I mean, we're just bouncing off this point of control down here. Uh, we have a, a, a pretty uh, important level here. Uh, you can see this liquidity filled and they're jumping from the offer to the bid side. And we see a lot of volume here. This is a key area. Okay, uh, we came just shy of it, and uh, we we came down to the point of control as it shifted up. And we also have the view app down here, and and I was bullish uh, as the day began anyway. Uh, and I'll, I'll go over some trades in that advanced order flow webinar. Okay, that uh, I took earlier this morning, uh, and um, yeah, looking for this uh, to tr trade to 2700, and we're just about there. Uh, that was my target earlier, uh, and. Um, uh, anyway, I took some profits before, before that area. Anyway, the um, uh, let's uh, define these elements on the book map chart so you understand what you're looking at here, and then we can look at some of the basic order flow uh, education. All right, so we'll take the view app off, we'll take the uh, point of control off, uh, and uh, close up that CVD. Uh, and look at these three elements here. Uh, we still have iceberg detector here. Nice iceberg down here. Look at that, 102 contracts uh, traded right down by the low here uh, on the buy side. So that's the way I like to use that iceberg detector is understanding context of a level that's important. And then larger players, they're kind of front running that area here. All right, and we, and we can, now we have extra information that uh, there's a larger player using uh, an iceberg order down there. Anyway, three elements on this book map chart. It's very simple data here. Uh, I, I know that uh, it looks like, uh, uh, you know, something very foreign uh, to other charting platforms out there. Well, uh, it is foreign looking. Uh, and, and this is because uh, we're uh, visualizing information or data uh, that other platforms simply do not show. Okay? And that primarily is the heat map here. Okay. And that's this orange, uh, you know, yellow, kind of blue, uh, and sometimes even red uh, heat map. And all it is, uh, this is the, you know, the the um, uh, uniqueness here uh, in the platform, or one of the primary elements that is unique. And all it is is showing you the historical order book. Okay. So let's zoom in here and let's just go through the order book. Let's define what that is. All right. So um, yeah, we're um, Looking here uh, at, see this white line, okay, this divides uh, the historical view here to the left uh, and the current market here to the right. Okay, so we're looking at the current best bid and offer right here. Uh, and then we can see this is the price ladder here. And uh, this is your current order book. Okay, so for those of you looking at the dome, you understand what this is. Uh, this is liquidity, okay? This is where they're, they're offering up here. Uh, and uh, this is where they're bidding down here. This is the auction. Okay, uh, we have a, a just a little bit different configuration of this dome. Uh, you can configure your dome just like uh, other domes out there. No problem at all. In fact, we have a new video on that. Uh, and uh, let me show you that. Uh, I think uh, uh, that might be helpful for you. Yeah, Mikhail, I'm looking at rhythmic data. Okay, and there are some advantages to rhythmic. Uh, anyway, the... Um, Let's go through this uh, features here. We just made this video here, okay? So I, I want to uh, give it to you guys because there's a lot of traders that look at the dome, uh, and uh, you can configure it in Bookmap no problem. 
uh, just like uh, any other dome out there. It's completely flexible here, uh, more flexible than uh, uh, other domes that are out there. Okay, so I'm going to put this into the chat. Uh, there you go. There's the link. Okay, uh, and let me just uh, just quickly just show you here because uh, a lot of these domes, uh, you can see the different configurations here. I'll show you. Okay, it's more toward the end here. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, you can figure it just like a dome out there. You can get your time and sales, for example. Um, and there's uh, other very popular uh, uh, dome setups like this one here, okay, pretty common. Uh, and there's more advanced ones, uh, looking at volume, looking at uh, uh, the uh, quotes delta here uh, as well, that liquidity that is pulled or added, uh, as well as time and sales. Okay, so you can configure this uh, any way you want these with these columns. Okay, I just want to note that here. Uh, you don't have to go with the setup that I'm looking at here. This is what I prefer, but this is completely configurable, and, and that's uh, the, the main point here. Um, all right, so uh, let's con continue on with the, with the dome. Uh, we're looking at liquidity here, right? Uh, that's uh, what these numeric values uh, represent here are contracts. Okay, this is where sellers are willing to sell. Down below, it's where they're willing to buy uh, at these very specific price levels. Okay, now uh, what we've done is we uh, we take these numeric values that are in the dome uh, and we turn them into a heat map in this window here with the best bid and offer. Okay, this number is the last traded volume, uh, and you can see very high liquidity. Well, th this is what it looks like. Okay, we we painted in the heat map. So up at 2,700 a figure, you can see there's 500 contracts up here. Okay, it's the most in the book right now. It's dominating the book. Okay, there's 450 or so here at uh, 99. And what are they doing? They're front running uh, this 2,700 figure. Okay, here comes the attack on them. And uh, now we just got some insight to these front runners up here. Okay, now we're down to 300 contracts. So we can answer a question here and we can understand the auction here uh, pretty, pretty uh, nicely. These guys up here did not have the intent to trade. If they pulled their liquidity, they do not want to take the risk. It looked like uh, it was uh, kind of bearish here. They wanted to be sellers at this level here at, at uh, 99. Well, we have our, our answer now. They don't really want to sell, do they? Okay. So uh, they shied away from it, uh, and uh, and they pulled that liquidity at the last second. Okay. So this is they they just did not have the intent to trade here, and now we know that. Okay. Um, Let's zoom out and let's find some other areas where they did have the intent to trade. Okay, and we can see it right down here. Okay, we traded into this level here. Okay, it's dominated here by this uh, 800, so we might not see the high liquidity. This is pretty typical. This looks like a kind of spoof activity here. Uh, let me, um, because this is so so dominant here compared to uh, uh, this level at 90. Um, uh, 94 and, a, and three quarters. I need to boost this up a bit. Okay, so we have a little more reference here. Okay, so you know they they stayed in the book here, right? So 398 contracts. Well, 319 of them traded. So some of it was pulled, right? But the majority of this actually transacted. And this is what it looks like. They trade right into that high liquidity here. Okay, uh, we can see it, right? We can see the the transactions that took place here. Okay, these red dots are the transactions. And so I just want to make a distinction here between, uh, you know, liquidity that is fake uh, or uh, uh, does not have the intention to trade and that liquidity that does. Okay. So now we're starting to have a context between uh, price uh, and the uh, aggressors or the volume uh, versus um, that auction and where they really uh, have the intent to trade. Okay. And this is the kind of context that is very, very insightful and helps you make more informed trading decisions. All right. Okay. So that's the heat map. And that's just one element on this book map chart that we've covered so far. Okay. But we can go back and we can now view not only this recent historical um, uh, action that we just we were just looking at, we can zoom out. Okay. And we can use this on much higher time frames here. Okay. So look at all this liquidity up here at 95. Okay. And it transacted. It went right into that area. What was the result of that transaction up here or these transactions? Well, it sold off. Okay. They didn't find any more buyers willing to take this higher. 
Okay. And this is, you know, from, uh, well, we're looking, you know, even, I don't know how much data I have here. I actually have quite a bit. Um, uh, they've been in the book forever here. Okay. And, and this is fact. Okay. And they transacted. Okay. And this is at the open too. We see, look at the volume pickup here in the open. Okay. Very typical uh, in any of these uh, uh, markets when uh, you have the cash open. Uh, and um, right above the swing here, right into high liquidity up here. And we found some sellers. Okay, so that's the context uh, we're putting together. In fact, we can even see that context down here, which is pretty nice. Uh, look at the high liquidity here, okay, sellers uh, at 82 or so, uh, that we trade through that area, we trade up into 95, and we come back down and almost back to where they broke out from in this little level right here. Okay, why did they break out from here? They actually broke out a little bit lower here at 80 or so. Uh, you can see the swings here, okay. Broke out from that level and we come back. Now this liquidity flipped from the offer to the bid side. Now they wanna be buyers. This is the new uh, understanding of this uh, instrument in terms of pricing, okay? They think it's worth more. And we're seeing that in the auction, okay? On the higher time frame. okay? Now you're not, it's just not possible to do that with a dome, okay? If you're looking at a dome, you're, you're not gonna be able to uh, piece all of that together. So now you can use that dome uh, on much, much higher time frames and for the uh, current and recent uh, uh, time frame as well. All right, that's just the liquidity. Uh, and um, let's go through the other two elements here and why there's uh, advantages to the way that we're displaying this data. Okay, and in fact, uh, I'll, I'm gonna show a candlestick chart here uh, and then I'll go through it. Okay, so in a candlestick, and we're all accustomed to looking at a candlestick chart. This is a five minute candlestick chart. Okay, well there's all sorts of details here that we're completely shut off to. Uh, and um, uh, this is why we don't display a period of data. Okay, because we wanna know really what happened with price. Uh, so we're displaying just best bid and offer. Okay, uh, and that's it. Okay, there's no periodicity here. There's no uh, volume bars or, you know, uh, time, range bars, um, point and figure, whatever it is, we're, we're not displaying it that way. We're displaying it just truly what was the best bid and offer over time, and then where did those transactions take place, okay? So, for example, looking at the, this little five-minute period in here, okay, uh, between this um, uh, can candle here and this candle here. Well, this is really what happened with price. And there's all sorts of details that you just don't have insight to at all. In fact, you'd be looking to short this up here. Uh, and, um, uh, but we see the buyers started to step in here. Okay. So let's see, did they, did they come back here? They spiked into this area here. Okay. And then we'll probably find those buyers again. No, not quite, not quite. Okay. We're still, we're still kind of in that, in this uh, range here. So we're just range bound. Uh, I was looking for the buyer. Well, they did step in here and they did get another uh, a move to the upside here. Okay. This is where the buyer stepped it up. Okay. And we didn't find enough though to trade into our 2700, the figure up here. Okay. We came one tick away up here. Okay. And then this was the attack uh, by those buyers. And then here was another attack by those buyers here. Just not enough. Okay. So we're just in the big range now. Uh, but uh, uh, this is one of the uh, uh, setups or, um, yeah, it's a, a setup looking at uh, precise uh, uh, volume data and context uh, with the um, uh, buyers and sellers in the, in the book. Uh, we understand that uh, they're willing to buy here and push it higher. Now, if they're going to support it, uh, they should be buyers back down here again. Okay? And we did find some. Okay? And we did get another attack up here, just not enough to, to get up into 2700. And that's what we're just looking at, right? Yeah, and that's where they pulled here at 99. Okay, so uh, uh, anyway, uh, let's see if we can, uh, those buyers uh, and bulls can step back in here. Uh, might have to go a little bit lower uh, to find the bulls. All right, so anyway, uh, that's the kind of detail that you just can't see in the candlestick, okay, is understanding some of these price structures uh, and then also uh, the volume it traded on those structures. Okay. So let's zoom in and I just want to show these other two elements on the bookmap chart uh, so it's clear because it's very, very simple data. It's not complex at all. It's, it's uh, much simpler than uh, understanding that concept of a candlestick. Okay. So uh, let's just bring up the dot size a little bit and we'll continue to zoom in here. 
Okay, so uh, here, this red line here is the historical best offer, and the green line is the best bid. Okay, about as simple as it can get in the market. Uh, and then um, uh, we see the, uh, the these transactions, these dots. Okay, uh, so let's zoom into a little area here, and um, and into this little area here it looks pretty good. Uh, see these green dots here? Well, these are buyers. They're taking liquidity off of the best offer, and that's just how the market works. Uh, if uh, someone's offering at a specific level and you hit the market buy button, you're not providing liquidity. You you just want in the market and you have to pay up for it. You pay up the spread uh, and you'll get filled here by whoever is uh, willing to sell to you. Okay? So uh, that's what the green dot is. The red dot is the opposite. These are market sell orders. Let's zoom into this area here because I want to show you the details that were uh, displaying very precisely here uh, in the um, well, not only the liquidity heat map, but also in the volume here. So we're displaying every single market event that took place. Okay, uh, and this is really what occurred at these levels. And we're looking at microsecond level here. Okay. We can continue to zoom into uh, you know nanosecond level, okay, uh, and look at billions of seconds instead of millions of seconds here. All right. So just want to show you that uh, very very precisely recorded. Okay, we came from that HFT quant environment. Uh, now, when we zoom out, though, look what we've done. Okay, we've made it useful uh, by understanding the volume clusters uh, in a bigger dot. Okay, uh, and in fact, this one's probably a bit better for that. Yeah. So uh, when you zoom back out, uh, we visually aggregate that into a bigger dot and a bigger cluster, and we give you the overall shape of it here. So, for example, if I hover over this uh, dot, uh, I can see this was for a volume of 50. Okay. Now, uh, and, it, and you can see that it's a uh, majority of it's buying, but there's buying and selling in here. That's why it's in this pie display. Okay. And let's zoom back in again. Okay. See, so note how when we zoom back in, we've separated out uh, because we're zoomed in. We can see precisely what occurred there, uh, and that's what we're displaying here. Okay. So you can still use the uh, uh, this data tip tool, uh, and it gives you the date, the, the very precise timestamp here what was on the, the ask at this uh, point, and then what this uh, volume represents here. Okay, or you can check out the volume, I'm sorry, the liquidity up above. Uh, and again, very precise uh, uh, date uh, or timestamp, uh, and then what was um, on the ask here. Okay, and you can see that this is, there was 333 contracts here, uh, and then they, they boosted it up to 343. So only 10, but you can see the difference here in the heat map. All right, now that heat map also uh, changes when we start to zoom out. Okay, it's giving you the overall reference to the liquidity here compared to what's in our viewable range. Okay, wherever there's very, very high liquidity, that's going to be painted uh, uh, red or orange up here in the scale. And then you have yellow is next, and then less liquidity is white, and then blue is, is uh, less, and then uh, the least is black. Okay, and you can change that heat map as you saw uh, I did earlier. Okay, to meet whatever you're looking at, uh, you know, for your time frame of trading. Okay, well, let's take the candlestick chart off. All right. Well, let's let's see what occurred here. Well, we didn't we just didn't find enough bulls, right, to come up and test this 2700. It remains untested. Okay, now we're we're probably fine enough down here. Uh, for buyers to start to step in after they uh, pretty much stop everybody out. And let's see if they can remount that attack back up into the range here and then back to the other side of the range to that high liquidity. Okay, So uh, that's a scenario here that uh, can play out, and we'll see uh, if, uh, if we get enough buyers to come back into this range. Okay, So uh, this is actually one of the uh, uh, setups we look for in the um, advanced education that we have. In fact, I'm looking for the buyers to step in above this kind of 94 or 95 area here on size. I need to see some size here uh, from those buyers. Then we have pretty high probability of trading up to the other side of the range here. Okay, and right now we just don't see them. Okay, sellers are in control at this point here, 94 and three quarters on the way down. Okay, so we have not found enough buyers yet. Anyway, that's just some of the basics here uh, in the order flow. Uh, let's see if the sellers can trade it into this kind of 90 area down here. Uh, and then that might be uh, enough to find the buyers down here to move it back up into the range. 
Okay, we'll see. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll wrap it up. We'll uh, call it a day here. And if you're signed up for the advanced education uh, webinars, we'll see you over there in just a minute.